Computing expected counts for discrete random variables. What is an expected count? An expected count is the number of successes we expect to get under the conditions. It is computed by multiplying the probability of success and the number of trials of the experiment. The formula is n times p, where n represents the number of trials and p represents the probability of success. Where does it come from? This value comes from the binomial distribution. The mean of a binomial distribution is n times p. This carries over here because in each of our trials we are interested in comparing the actual number of successes with the number of successes we would expect to see if the null hypothesis were actually true. And right here is the rigorous definition of an expected count. Let's look at an example. Suppose we wish to determine if a standard die is fair. Our null hypothesis would appear as follows. Each of the probabilities of success for each of the faces on a standard die would be one-sixth. Suppose we roll this standard die 100 times. Since the probability of success is assumed to be one-sixth for each outcome, we shall multiply the number of trials by one-sixth because this is what we expect to see if the null hypothesis is indeed true. So for each outcome we have the following table. Each result is about 16.67 Let's look at another example. Suppose we wish to determine the distribution of colors in a bag of M&Ms. The claim from the company is that 16% of your M&Ms should be green, 20% should be orange, 14% are yellow, 24% are blue, 13% are red, and 13% are brown. Suppose we examine 200 M&Ms. Our null hypothesis would translate as shown here because these are the probabilities of success of getting each of those colors. So to compute the expected counts we take the number of trials and multiply it by the probability of success. So for red if we were to randomly select 200 M&Ms and there is a 13% chance of it being red, I should see about 26 M&Ms. I expect to see 26. For green, I would expect to see 32 under the same calculation. Uh, in yellow and blue, brown and orange, those uh, expected counts are computed here as well. By simply taking the number of trials, in this case 200, times the probability of success. In this case, the probability of getting each of those colors. But what if we have a table where we don't have just a list of values, but an actual table of values? Well, a contingency table, or a two-way table, is a table constructed to relate two categorical variables. The row variable will be one variable, and the column variable is another one of these categorical variables. Now here we have 
a contingency table. We are comparing the level of education with employment status, and the source of this information is the U.S. Census Bureau. So over here, where we see the brace, we get the row variable. These are the row variables, the employment status. These are the row variables. The column variables, which are given here by the brace, would be the level of education. And this is what we are going to compare. And these uh, circled entries in the table are what we refer to as cells. Cells in a table are the actual observed values uh, for this table. It's what we actually observed. Now look at the distribution of each variable separately and each row variable and each column variable has a distribution and we're going, we're going to need this information in order to construct our expected counts. And we call this the marginal distribution. And The reason why it's called the marginal distribution is because it will actually appear in the margins of our table. A marginal distribution of a variable is a frequency or a relative frequency distribution of, e of either the row or column variables in a contingency table. The reason why we use this is that it removes the effect of either the row variable or the column variable in the contingency table. So what we're going to do to compute these marginal distributions is we're actually going to compute the row totals and the column totals for each row and column uh, in the table. And the marginal distribution of the row variables will be displayed by the row totals and the marginal distribution of the column variable will be displayed by the column totals. And here we actually have a picture of our marginal distribution for our contingency table. The totals that are circled over here, this is the marginal distribution for the row variable. The circled numbers down here, these totals represent the column variable's marginal distribution. And the box in red is the grand total, the total number of individuals that were sampled. And we will need this number as well. Do we have enough information for the expected counts? Well, no, not yet. There's still one more thing we need before we can compute the expected counts in this table. Recall that the expected count is equal to the number of trials times the probability of getting that outcome. What we have right now are the number of trials. We still need a probability. So we have to compute the probabilities of getting each outcome in the table. In order to do this, we need the relative frequency marginal distribution. A relative frequency marginal distribution is when the marginal distribution for each variable are divided by the grand total. And that's why we needed that grand total. So the marginal distribution by itself provides us with the number of trials. This is the n part of the expected count calculation. The relative frequency marginal distribution provides us with the 
probabilities we need for the p part of the expected count calculation. And here is a table of the relative frequency marginal distribution. The numbers in red here represent the row variables relative frequency marginal distribution. We take the row total, divide by the grand total, and we get our decimals, our probabilities, if you will. The blue numbers down at the bottom of the table represent the column variables relative frequency marginal distribution and here again we take the column totals and divide them by the grand totals to obtain our probabilities. Now we're ready for the expected counts. Take the number of trials for a row, the row total if you will, multiply each entry in the row by the relative frequency obtained in each column write this result in a new table and we refer to this as the expected counts table and then you repeat this process for every row in the contingency table here we see the expected counts table and we have all of the expected counts computed for each cell in our contingency table. So if we wanted to determine how many we would expect to see for individuals who are employed but did not finish high school, we would look here in the table and determine that we have about 19,172. So what this means is that we expect to see 19,172 individuals who are employed but did not finish high school if the null hypothesis were indeed true. So if we had an inkling to say how many would we expect to see if they were unemployed but had some college, then we would look here in the table and we would expect to see about 1,130 individuals if the null hypothesis were true and this is how we interpret the information for the expected counts. Now you may consider the number of trials for each column, the column totals, instead of the rows. You would still multiply each entry in the column by the relative frequency obtained in each row. You would write the results in a new table, again the expected counts table, and then you would repeat this process again for every column in the contingency table. The results will be identical. The formula for expected counts, or expected frequencies, in a contingency table is shown here. Now this is the exact same calculation that we've already been performing for our example. We take the row totals, we multiply them by the column totals, and we divide that product by the grand total. And we do this for every cell in the contingency table. Because of the commutative property of multiplication for real numbers, we may write these expected frequencies as the column total divided by the grand total. That would be the relative frequency marginal distribution for the column variables. And then we may multiply that by the row total, the number of trials that we had for that particular row variable. We may also interchange the locations of the row and column totals, and this switches the viewpoint only. The row total divided by the grand total becomes the relative frequency marginal distribution for the row variable, and then the column total will become the number of trials. So 
all in all, it is still the marginal distribution value times the relative frequency marginal distribution value. And again, you do this for each and every cell in a contingency table. And this is how you determine the expected counts for a discrete random variable.